Welcome to week 9 of the Chief and Rewind. This is our season finale episode, and to close out the season, we have a few special segments for you. But before we begin, we here at Shelby TV would like to congratulate quarterback Zach Keen, who recently announced his commitment to Northern Michigan University. Congratulations, Zach. And now, to honor the seniors' last game as Chieftains, we put together a fun little segment with them. Before the season started, we asked some of the seniors who their favorite football players were. Here's what they said. My favorite football player, uh, Aaron Rodgers. I would say is Aaron Rodgers because of his uh, swagger and his uh, calmness and how he deals with himself uh, off the field. So it, I would say it's Aaron Rodgers just all around. Uh, Jadavion Clowney. Yeah, I like his mindset and his attitude towards the game. It's pretty cool. J.J. Watt. Same position, he's just an animal on the field. J.J. Watt. Why is that? I mean, I've just been watching him since I was younger. Since I was a kid, I've been watching him. He's just, he's a beast. He's just fun to watch. Kurt said the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite football player? Right now it is uh, Matthew Stafford. Just the way he goes out and leads his team every Sunday. I love it. Uh, Cam Newton. Why is that? Uh, I don't know, just the, the swagger he plays with, his excitement, he's just one of the best quarterbacks in, in the league, so. And he's got a good backstory, so. Probably, probably Aaron Donald. You know, he's, uh, for a D lineman, you know, he's somewhat short, he's like 6'1", six, 6'2", six, he's going against like 6'4", tackles, you know, and he dominates them, you know, he's just, uh, he's just a beast. So, I mean, I, I strive to be him. Rob Gronkowski. I love him. He's just such a he's just such a fun guy, you know. And I don't know how can you not love him? <laughs> he's retired now, so yeah, that made me sad. <laughs> Coming up later in the show, we will reveal the top five plays from the season. But there's still a lot to get to. Right now, we'll take a look at our final senior feature of the season. Last but certainly not least, we sit down with defensive end James Valenzuela. I started playing seventh grade, but ever since I was like four, football has been like, it has been a part of my life. You know, my uncles got me in it and the rest is history. It's helped me uh, like better myself, you know. Uh, it's made me become a better player, person, uh, you know, a lot of teamwork, cooperation, commitment. The freshman year and JV year, I uh, tore my meniscus in both knees back-to-back -back years, so, you know, playing half a season for those two years, um, you know, it sucked. Uh, there was times where, you know, I wanted to, uh, like, not play football, but, you know, something told me to keep going, you know, I just grind it out. You know, he's had some injuries uh, the past few years and, and really kind of hindered him a little bit uh, in years past, but, um, you know, he's, he's been very committed and definitely persevered through through the injuries and through um, you know anything he's had to, to go through. So he's, he's done a great job, just continues to work hard every day. He's a great kid, great attitude. James is another super hard worker. Him and Gabe are like like two and two together. Like they, they're always grinding together. James, James has gotten better over the years, especially coming back from two ACL injuries. James is another D lineman. He also plays DN. I mean, he's, he's one of my friends too. So he's an animal when he gets out there. He made some big transformations this off season, so. I'm pretty excited to see what happens. The trench mob, you know, Ian, Kurt McGuire, Gabe Olszewski, he's been, I've been playing with him since seventh grade. Abdul, Diego, I love those kids. Oh, I loved it. Uh, it's, a, it's a great environment. Um, it's the people, the players uh, I play with, I just love them. After the break, we'll review the highlights from the Chieftains' final game of the 2019 season. Stay tuned. There's just one place where students are students first, and athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics, high school sports, a winning part of a complete education. Sports give so many opportunities to kids. It gives them an opportunity to see where they fit within a team, persevere, 
understanding how to work with different personalities. Those are the lessons that will make you a successful adult. As a mom, you have to have an understanding of what concussions are. Concussions are things that are treatable. If we take care of athletes, they will be able to develop and have a long, happy, healthy life. After coming off a much needed victory over LCN in week eight, the Utica Chieftains went on the road for their final game of the season to face their toughest opponent yet. The undefeated Chippewa Valley Big Reds, who are eyeing another state championship, welcome in the Chieftains for our week nine matchup. On Utica's first drive, Keen looks to his right and targets Jason Nazar, but it pops out of his hands and Miles Harris takes it himself for an interception. But Garrison Nick says, that's cool, but watch this, as he intercepts Josh Kolka's pass and takes it 79 yards to the house for a pick six. The two-point attempt was no good, but the Chieftains create some early momentum. The Big Reds look to get some momentum of their own as sophomore running back Cephas Harris gets into the red zone. And they follow that up with a touchdown by Myron Harris. The extra point was good, and the Big Reds take a 7-6 lead. Third down and one for Utica on their next drive, and they elect to throw it, where Garrison Nix makes a nice grab for a first down. He has really stepped up for the team these last few weeks. And the Chieftains don't waste this opportunity, as Gabe Olszewski powers his way into the end zone in his last game in a Utica jersey. The extra point was no good, making it a 12-7 lead for the Chieftains at the end of the first quarter. To start the second quarter, Ian Grudzinski finds his way to Josh Tolka and gets the sack with the help of some teammates. The Chieftains start off their next drive deep in their own zone, and a nice reception by Olszewski gives them some breathing room, but it's fourth and one. But Zach Keen keeps it himself here and gets just enough to move the chains. However, the drive would stall out, forcing Utica to punt. Chip Valley's next drive sees Kolka hand it off to Myron Harris, and he takes care of the rest by taking it 32 yards to the end zone, and the Big Reds take back their lead, making it 14 to 12. The Big Reds stymie the Chieftains' next drive, and they're back on offense here, and it looks like Garrison Nix picks off Kolka's pass again. But no, the officials rule it an incomplete pass. It's hard to see from our view here, and the Big Reds dodge a bullet on this one. And they would take full advantage on their next play. Myron Harris runs to the outside and blows past every Utica defender before he dives at the pylon for his third touchdown of the game. And Chip Valley takes a 21-12 lead. And the Big Reds keep their momentum going on their next drive with a touchdown pass to their sophomore wideout Zach Ernat, giving them a 28-12 lead at halftime. The Chieftains kick off to start the second half, but it's mishandled, and Jason Nazar says, I'll take that, and it's Utica's ball. Zach Keen eyes the end zone for a receiver, and he targets Rory Montreal, who almost makes the catch. But remember Jason Nazar's catch from last week? Well, he did it again, except this time he hauls it in for six points. The Chieftains go for two again, and Olszewski just breaks the plane of the goal line, and Utica comes back within eight points of the Mac Red champs. On the ensuing kickoff, Matty Barsh's kick makes a nice bounce, and the Chieftains have a chance to recover, but Chip Valley wouldn't make the same mistake twice as they get to the ball first. But the Chieftain defense keeps the Big Reds out of their territory and force them to punt. And Utica starts off a nice drive here with a pass to Azar, who's having himself a nice game and gets a first down reception. Zach Keen does a great job of escaping the pocket here and throws a perfect pass to Brett Berg for another first down. And he keeps making the most out of each play by breaking a tackle, spins out of another one and gains some yardage, but it's fourth down. Was that a problem for Zach? Not in the slightest. He would find a wide open Garrison Nix to keep the drive alive. 
It would come down to fourth down again, where Kane targets Zach Jacobs, but it's deflected, and Devarius McGraw catches it out of midair for the pick, ending Utica's big drive. And the explosiveness of Myron Harris comes through once again as he takes off for 78 yards. But the Chieftains catch a break as the Big Reds get called for a hold, negating the touchdown. We head into the fourth with under eight minutes to go, where Myron Harris takes the Big Reds into Utica territory. But they're taken to fourth and six, and Kurt Kessin makes the tackle on Kolka, and the Chieftains get the ball back on downs. Gable Shevsky gets some yardage with this reception. But they're taken to fourth down, where Ian Cameron comes up with the sack and now Chef Valley takes over on downs with two minutes left. And Myron Harris makes up for that lost touchdown with his fourth of the game, and that would seal the victory for the Big Reds. What a hard-fought game by the Chieftains against one of the best teams in the state, and the team didn't hang their heads after this loss. Uh, it was just a, you know, it was, it was a fantastic game. Great game, uh, both teams battled hard uh, until the very end. You know, I'm, I'm really proud of our guys. They came out, they fought hard, they played, uh, uh, they played a great game, and uh, you know it's a great game. Talk a little bit about your special teams. It was a big part of today's game: onside kicks and uh, your, your, your punting and things like that. Yeah, I mean we, uh, you know, I thought I thought we missed a few plays early. Um, you know, we gave them some good field position, but you know overall, it, it, I thought they they played a great game. We, in the second half, we came out and uh, you know we got a couple of onside kicks. One of them, one of them, we didn't get, but. Um, you know, right out of the gate in the second half, that was a huge play. Kind of turned the momentum in our favor, and, um, you know, we were able to capitalize on that. And I thought, uh, you know, they, they played a great game. They played hard, and, um, you know, we knew they had some, some really good returners deep, so we were trying to kick it, uh, kick it away from them, and, um, you know, we were able to get a couple of those balls. When you were close going into the fourth fourth quarter, only eight points, um, they were only leading by eight points. Talk a little bit about your, your defense and how they performed tonight. Uh, they played amazing. I mean, they played... Uh, you know, they, they had some huge stops for us and, and you know, they put us in a, a great position to, uh, to, to have a chance to, to be in, the, in that ballgame at the end. And, um, you know, we weren't able to make the play uh, to kind of get, get within a few points, but, um, you know, they, they played amazing. They just, uh, they battled all game and, you know, Chippewa's got some, got some great players on offense and, um, you know, I'm really proud of how they played. Um, I mean, they're a great team, a great team. Uh, us, I mean, we just came in. It's our last game. There's nothing to lose, really. So, I mean, we just came out and gave it our all, and it ended up being a game. But props to them. They're a great team. I hope they do think great things in the playoffs. They're a great team. We really battled. Uh, the word teamwork, what does that mean to you and your guys and your team in general? Uh, the word team, uh, teamwork for me, it's more like family because, I mean, all the hard work. I mean, it's just you're all together grinding. I mean, you're basically family. And it's just teamwork. It's you're just all doing your job. So as you reflect on, on this season, um, what, what are some of the things that just come through, go through your head? Uh, I mean, there's a, many uh, games and opportunities we could have had. Um, I mean, it's all in the past. I think everything happens for the way it's supposed to be. But I mean, there's nothing I would trade for, and I'd do it all again. You guys really had held in there defensively. What were you seeing down in the trenches uh, against Chippewa Valley? Uh, they're really big. You know, it's. Yeah, they were really big, really good guys, great technique. Um, you know, it's just a battle of who wants it more, you know? Okay, as you, as you reflect that on this season, uh, just bring up some uh, good memories that you, you've had during the season. Uh, probably one of the good memories, uh, you know, getting that win against Lance Cruz North. Um, you know, I think defensive, like, line-wise, that was probably our best, like, game. Um, I'd probably say that's probably one of the best uh, memories. The Chieftains end their season with a 3-6 overall record, but the team made some highlight reel worthy plays along the way, which allowed us to rank the top five plays from the season. Before we reveal the top five, here are a few honorable mentions. In Week 7 versus Warren Mott, Garrison Nix hauls in a deflected ball out of midair for a touchdown. Great awareness by Nix. In Week 5 versus Lakeview, it's third down and garbage time for the Chieftains, and Zach Jacobs secures a beautiful 44-yard throw by Zach Keen. And in Week 9 versus Chippewa Valley, Zach Keen breaks a few tackles and finds Jason Azar in the end zone on his toes. 
And now for the top five. At number five, we go to week eight versus LCN. And this catch by Jason Azar barely beats out his catch from week nine due to the difficulty of the catch. Does this kid have talent or what? At number four, we go back to week one versus Bloomfield Hills, where the game is tied with 30 seconds left in the game. And Matty Barsh kicks a 32-yard field goal to win the game for the Chieftains. At number three, we revisit week nine versus Chip Valley, where Garrison Nix picks off Josh Kolka and goes off to the races for 79 yards and the score. At number two, it's week two versus Gross Point North, and the Chieftains are on fourth and eight, but Jason Azar makes a fantastic over the head grab to give them a first down. And finally, at number one, we go to week three versus Ford, where Utica goes for it on fourth and 11, and Zach Keen throws a perfect 35 yard bomb to Brett Berg in the end zone and I asked Zach about that play after the game. Uh, it just rolled out to the left, uh, play bro broke down. Saw Berg, he's a very talented receiver, he's got really good hands. Uh, put it up for him in a place where he could grab it and I knew exactly what he was gonna do. That will conclude the 2019 season for the Utica Chieftains and for us here at the Chieftain Rewind. We want to thank Coach Matt Maruli and the entire Utica football team for helping us make this show what it is. Thank you for joining us for another season of Utica Chief in Football. We'll see you next year.